What's up YouTube? So um, today I'm going to be starting to remove the soft top on the MRS. Um, mainly I'm doing this because it's a free way to gain performance and lose weight. And the soft top in this car isn't in the best condition. Um, it did have some leaks and stuff, but it's had a hard top on it the whole time. But anyways, I'm going to remove the soft top. Um, I originally was planning to go to Global Time Attack here in Washington in June, but due to the coronavirus, I'm not sure how that's going to play out. But either way, I had a lot of things in store for the car, but um, I guess now that I'm working from home, I have a lot more time in the day, uh, not having to commute and everything. So I'm going to be doing a lot more work to the car. Um, so step one of all the mods that I wanted to do was um, remove the soft top. So I'm just going to get going here. I might not film everything because it's just a tedious, straightforward thing. Um, you just remove the plastic panels here to get to the bolts that get to the soft top. Um, I believe the channel Dimly Lit Garage has a good video. Um, if you need some more in-depth tutorials, that's the video that I watched, and that's what I'm going to follow when I undertake this. So um, right now, I've already removed, let's see, um, remove that panel and the side panels, so they're all up here. Um, just removed all this, I'm gonna remove this, and then I'm gonna have to remove the interior panels here, and then we're gonna be able to reach the bolts in the back to remove the soft top, but um, it's pretty straightforward. I think the soft top rate weighs close to 50 pounds, so um, it should be a significant gain in performance, especially because the car's so light. Anything you do to the car, adding power or losing weight, has a pretty big difference compared to other cars because the car is already lightweight to begin with. So um, I'm going to get going here and I will pick up the camera when I reach some checkpoints. So for now, I'm just going to remove all these plastic panels and I'll catch up with you guys then. All right, so I removed all the panels down here, um, removed the seat belt connection up here, these two 14s. Now we're just removing this. Um, the wind deflector came off with the two, I mean the four 10s here. Then to remove this, you have to remove this, like all these four, and then we should be able to pull this off. So here's one thing um, I didn't see on the video or in the forums is to remove this. You can pop out the pull tab um, label. I used a plastic interior pry tool and you just pop it off. Then you got these two screws so we can remove this. So I'll remove these two screws, then I'll be able to take off the plastic trim up here. All right, so next thing I do after I remove the trim piece up here is you remove these plastic um, like nuts from up here. The one, two, three, and four. And that should allow you to remove the fabric here that's attached to the soft top. That comes off. You can see how dirty and gross this is. Yeah. All right, so making fairly quick uh, progress here. I removed the parcel shelf. Oops, sorry. Ugh. So I'm gonna have to flip this up so you guys can see. So I removed, there's a plastic parcel, parcel shelf that goes here. Um, and then there's a piece of fabric that just unclips. And now we can see the nuts we have to remove. And I think they're all 10 mil. They go all the way around here holding the soft top to the chassis, so we're almost there. Just gotta remove these and then I think we'll be good to go. All right, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Just taking this off. Um, hopefully it comes out then. These sides still feel pretty strongly attached, so there might be something there. But I was able to get these back bolts off. So this off top is free on the back so gross. Look at that. Some more coronavirus. But anyway, um, I'll figure out what's holding it on the side. Oops. Not much, actually. That's off. Um, looks like the... What is this? It's the defroster wire. I think we might have to unbolt that here. Um, but yeah, almost there. Um, and I'll catch up with you guys. I'll let you know if there's something on the side here. But everything seems to be coming off. Yeah. 
All right, so quick update on things. Soft top's completely removed. Um, all right, so I've got the roll bar in place to where I'll be able to put the bolt here to align it with the side mounts. And once this is uh, slightly tightened down, everything else, um, let me turn on my light. Everything else should line up. So as you can see, we've got here, then here, and behind here that we're gonna have to drill holes in um, after I snug this up. Um, so right now I'm gonna have to sort through uh, these bolts and nuts that came with the hard top, I mean the roll bar. So they're all here, not labeled, so we're gonna have to figure it out on our own. Um, yeah, so far so good. Slow and steady progress. Um, so I'm gonna go probably put this in another bag because this isn't very organized and see if I can figure out what goes where with those bolts. But, um, also if you guys are wondering what's going on here, because we removed the, um, soft top, we had to cut the soft top assembly off. It's kind of ratchet. So I think the only way to do this, which I did, was, um, uh, saw it off. So that's cut there and then on the other side. And that's to remove the soft top assembly. You guys won't have to do that if you want to keep the soft top, but there's no soft top anymore, so yeah. And then of course. All right, so as you guys saw before, I had a bag full of nuts and bolts. I put in a Ziploc so I can seal it. But anyway, it's complicated because I couldn't find a, the right bolt that would thread in here. And it looks like these are the only two 16 millimeter and they go here and connect to the car. And as you can see, Wait, let me turn off this Gran Turismo music. Um, so, as you can see, these bolts and these bolts are different than the rest that are in here, but you can't really tell by just looking. Like, they look really similar, and you'll be frustrated because it's not threading to the seat, to the car. So these two 16 millimeter, like the head is 16 millimeter, are the ones that go here. And then the seatbelt ones, which I'm not doing now, but later are here, and they come like this, uh, pre-assembled. So these two are seatbelt, the 16, and the fancy washer thing. Where is it? Anyway, oh, here. And the fancy washer go to the car, and these fancy things attach to the black caps to make it a more finished look in the end. But yeah. Anyway, that's how it attaches to the car. A little frustrating if you don't know that these are different than the other ones that are similarly sized. Yeah. So like I said, again, to repeat myself, I tightened it all the way down to bring it down flush with where we want to start drilling holes. So um, should be pretty straightforward from here considering these two have to line up anyway. So I guess we're gonna get to dropping the tank now and then we'll start drilling the holes here. All right, so I'm about to remove the tank. To do this, you have to undo everything that's attached to the tank. So all these plugs, and then I can't point, but you'll see there are two fuel lines, one vertical and one to this cap thing. And then the EVAP line has to be removed, but you can undo the EVAP right here. So I just unplug this. It's a little clip, clips to this EVAP, and then, yeah, so it's just the EVAP and the two lines in there. And then underneath, which I didn't film because it's just such a hassle, but I'll just point. The fuel tank is only held by four bolts, so it's just this, this, and then two on the other side. And then you have to undo the fuel filler pipe hose so you just undo this clamp twist it off it'll be seized on there and then as you lower the tank you have to move these um the ac line and the coolant lines out of the way carefully to not break it uh yeah so that's all so you got the evap two fuel lines 
four bolts and then this filler hose. Make sure everything's out of the way. Right now I have the jack here. I have to try and do those two fuel lines, which hopefully are uh, hopefully are easy-ish. Get off there. We should be good to go to lower the tank and finally freaking drill the holes. Okay, so you have to remove the evap line. So that's another one. And then this little orange clip here goes down here. You'll see it on your car. And you have to squeeze these two and then push it out this way. It goes right here. To remove this, and I think everything is off. Yeah. So everything's disconnected. And we can drop the tank now, I think. Let's check in one more time. That's a good evap line. Or the AC line. The AC line. Oh, I think so. Good. Is that? Yep. Okay, the top looks good. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so checkpoint. The fuel tank is removed. Let's go check it out. So, now that it's removed, you guys can get a better view of what we had to remove. Um, so you gotta obviously remove this plug, and then you get the little orange clip from here. Remove this. Remove this. And then remove this. And then you have to remove these two to the evap, um, the little box up there. And then you gotta remove this, which is the filler pipe. And then you should be good to remove the tank. The tank is only held on by four 12 millimeter uh, bolts, as you can see. So once you have the stuff removed from the top, it's all fairly easy to do. So the reason you have to remove the tank coming down here is obviously um, we don't get to go up into that uh, brace recess. So we're going to have to um, cut here so that we can get in there and put the backing plate on. But um, yeah, this is under the car where the fuel, uh, fuel tank was. Um, and you had to move this uh, AC line out of the way um, so that we could get the tank in so it would go here to pop those on but yeah this is maybe a little more tedious than just dropping the motor um, all right so um, so far I've got the bolts that go there to this part um, yeah, so I have those, the top firewall bolts in. There's those, and they just have a backing plate. Now, I just finished this. Well, got this lined up, which is so stupid, like the way you have to do this. So essentially, you have to use these backing plates behind here. So how are you gonna get your hand back there, right, to line this up? So you have to go, oops. You have to go through here and use a long stick per the directions to line this up. I found the easiest way to do this was to slide it down with the long stick and then stick a screwdriver through one of the holes and try to line it up that way um, to line this up and try to push it towards this way so that you can get it flush with the wall and then tighten one side down. It's honestly uh, pain in the ass and just if you're not patient, it's gonna be a terrible job. So Now I'm gonna go do that side same thing got to stick the uh, Little backing plate through here and then I'm gonna have to line it up over there and then get the bolts on so after I do that the only thing left will be um, drilling for these which I don't know how because there's no way you can reach that and then um, drilling these and then cutting underneath to reach that all right so now we finally attach these ones down here and this is the one that requires you to cut underneath <sighs> so the way we did this is we took a saw obviously and um, cut this part here um, and the way we could tell that's where it goes is 
These are those two mounts from the other section of the roll bar and you would know the bracket is here so you cut out a little section here and the reason you do this is so that you can get the backing plate in because you can't get the backing plate in without doing this so if you look in there if you can see um, that's just the backing plate and then we put the screw through and that's the only reason you cut this and on the other side is to get the backing plate through so now that everything is assembled or it's all screwed on here I'm gonna spray it with some undercoating so that it doesn't rust and then probably put some aluminum tape over it to seal it. Um, this part's covered by the gas tank anyway, so I'm not that worried. And it's pretty much a race car now. It doesn't see much street miles, but once it has undercoating sprayed there and the aluminum tape, I highly doubt much water would get in there anyway. So it's also going up. Um, but yeah, that's why you cut that so um, we can put the backing plate in so yeah okay so here are the seat belt bolts that are provided and you put the factory seat belt to this hole and it comes with this set of bolts this one um, is designed just for the seat belt and it comes already pre-assembled like this and the seat belt goes right here where the bushing is the spacer thing and it goes between the two washers. All right, so you installed your uh, roll bar. So the next thing you have to do is cut the interior trim so that you can put um, back the interior if you'd like. You don't have to do this, but to have a clean look, you probably should. So the first thing I did was this, the panel. You have to cut vertically and then make a circle here. Um, here I use the hole saw. Turned out pretty good. Uh, just measure twice, cut once, it was about, uh, you just measure the center of the tubes here and then it gives it a nice clean look back here. Next is the side trim so that you can cover here so that it's not sharp. Um, essentially, here I'll take it off. I'm still trimming it a bit, but this is what it looks like. <clears throat> so I thought this would be better to show you because I'm going to put them side by side anyway to cut again. But here's an uncut panel for the passenger side. And here's the one I cut. So you can see the clear differences. Oh. You can see here, this is all the stuff I had to cut. So here for the bar, then you have to go in towards the seat belt and then cut down this way. So to do the same here, we're gonna have to cut basically this section. So yeah. So while we, we are here, I kind of had a good idea, I think, of how I'm going to cut it. So I decided I would put the cut piece here. Sorry, it's hard to do with one hand. And I'm going to line it up like this so I can get a rough outline of uh, where I'm going to cut it. So I'll just sharpie here along where I cut on the other piece. So that's an easy way to get going on the other side once you've done one side. All right, guys, so here it is. Finally got everything installed, all the interior bits. So check it out. So as you guys can see, you had to cut the interior to fit here. And then the bottom pieces for the trays still have the tools here. Mm, yeah, so I have to cut around here, cut here. Uh, I still have to put the door uh, sills in, but yeah, pretty much done as far as everything that wraps around the uh, roll bar. Um, on the sides, um, we're probably going to put some of this old soft top leather and like cover up this completely, but for now I screwed in the remaining fabric uh, to the side to cover it up nicely. And yeah, so... That was uh, pretty terrible to install. Um, I don't recommend it to any noobs, but uh, hopefully this tutorial uh, was helpful. Um, again, um, I showed you guys where you have to cut and where you have to bolt everything down. And um, if you guys need any help, feel free to leave a comment, but it's pretty straightforward. Like the whole concept really isn't that hard, but actually doing it takes a lot of maneuvering stuff and cutting, but yeah, all worth it. So, hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial, and I'll see you in the next one. 
now we'll be able to go on track, but of course there's the coronavirus, so we have no events to go to. But um, after this roll bar install, I'm going to install um, the racing harnesses finally, so that I can put it onto this harness bar. And then I'll be able to get a quick release and a smaller steering wheel finally, so that I can um, just have a smaller racing steering wheel, which I've wanted for a while, but I wanted the harnesses first. So yeah, um, that's all for now, and I'll see you guys in the next one.